And here's my thing. Pain is information. Anytime you're having any kind of pains or ailment, that's information. That's your body giving you feedback. And what works for one person may not work for the other. So there's no one thing that works for everyone. Harold LaFall, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm good, Tommy. How are you? Doing great. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So just uh, if you could tell our audience a little bit about uh, who you are, where, you fr- where you're from, where you grew up. Well, I grew up in a small little place. Well, it's not really small, but I grew up in Oakland, California, which is probably about 15 minutes outside of San Francisco. You know, like all college students, I didn't know what I wanted to be. You know, I went from wanting to be my... Uncle had convinced me that I wanted to be an engineer, although I had always known that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. My uncle had read somewhere that engineers made all this money, so he had convinced me that that's what I should become. So I started out studying that and realized that that wasn't for me, so I changed my major several times, like most undergrads do. So I ended up getting my degree in political science, and I ended up getting my master's uh, in management. But how did you make the leap from there into your health and wellness journey and all your success on your social media pages? Where was the where was the turning point? So back in August 5th of 2015, 2015, I got a call that really changed my life. And that call was letting me know that I had been diagnosed with cancer. And Like anybody who hears those words, you're shocked. I was absolutely shocked. And I think I went into a place of numb because when we typically hear cancer, we think death. Those two seem to always kind of go together. Um, And so I I got that diagnosis. and, And how I came about getting that diagnosis, I had mistakenly mentioned to my doctor you know how they ask you the questions, you have a new doctor, they ask you about family history. Well, I thought that my dad had told me he had had prostate cancer. So I told my doctor that. And so that's what prompted her to even check for that because of me telling her that. Turns out my dad didn't have prostate cancer. He had actually had an enlarged prostate. But thank goodness I made that mistake because that's when they, they ran the test and found out that I had, in fact, did have prostate cancer at the age of 48. And normally, they don't start checking you for prostate cancer until you're 50. So it was fortunate that I made that mistake, and which prompted them to uh, run the test. Because I had, like so many uh, prostate cancer um, individuals, I had no symptoms at all. So cancer was in my body, but there was no symptoms. And so after, you know, getting that diagnosis, my, I had to go see the oncologist and um, a urologist, and they recommended that I have surgery sooner than later. And because it was, it was like my mind was kind of in a fog. I, I just kind of went with what they said. I didn't question anything. I didn't even do any research. I just kind of followed their lead and ended up, they recommended that I have surgery to put these radioactive seeds into my prostate to see if it would kill the cancer. Because they didn't know. They, you know, with cancer, you don't know if any treatment, how effective it's going to be. So ended up doing that. And afterwards, I had every imaginal side effect uh, from that surgery you can imagine. I had incontinence, I had erectile dysfunction, and I was in excruciating pain for probably about a year as a result of the surgery. And anytime you're going through something like cancer, when people looked at me, I looked okay, but they didn't know the pain that was going on you know, behind closed doors. I would be in so much pain, Tommy, that I would go into my bathroom 
and close it because at the time my son was 15, it was just he and I in the house. I would go in the bathroom and close the door and just scream because the pain was so intense. And, um, and, and for me, being a single parent at the time uh, to a 15 year old, my greatest concern was the impact this would have on him. Because when you have a diagnosis like that, it doesn't only affect you, it affects those that love you because they start to worry about, oh my God, is he going to be okay? Is he going to die? And so for me, what became really important was for me to focus on making sure that I was in a place where I knew I was going to be okay because I wanted to be able to convey that to my son so he wasn't worrying because, you know, just that diagnosis just, it just conjures up all types of fears and emotions. And if you are in a fearful and scared place, that's going to make those that are around you who love you, that's going to make them scared as well. So I really had to work on myself and work on kind of my mindset and had to really be intentional about staying positive. And one of the things that I started doing, Tommy, was I thought it was probably real strange to folks outside looking in. I started putting little post-it notes on my mirrors, just saying, just to remind myself that I was going to be okay. So I would like, I, I would write, I am enough. I will get through this. You know, this too shall pass. This, yeah, just things to encourage myself because your mind can sometimes play tricks on you when you're going through, you know, something like that. And I needed to keep myself, I needed to keep my spirits high and I needed to just remind myself that I was going through this experience, but this was not the end. And here's my thing, pain is information. Anytime you're having any kind of pains or ailment, that's information, that's your body giving you feedback. And what works for one person may not work for the other. So there's no one thing that works for everyone. So. Um, for me, it's just fine. It, it, it was just kind of testing different things to see what worked for me and what felt right for my body and how my body responded. What would you suggest to someone who's looking to, you know, maybe someone who is looking at some bad, uh, some bad health results, maybe not quite cancer yet, which is like a big shift, you know, that's like a, you know, you have to do something at this point, but someone who wants to make a shift, but they're just like, ah, oh, you know, it's, to give up ice cream and all of that, and you know, this is part of my culture. Like, but I know that I'm 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 borrowing against my longevity, or that there's a better life for me out there somewhere. Uh, from health, from a health and wellness perspective, how do you take that first step into your uh, health and wellness journey? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one of the things that I discovered, and I knew from my own experience, is that most people don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. Um, and for me, juicing or doing smoothies, just in the morning, just to start your day off with some, some, um, healthy nutrients, like, for, uh, and for me, it's a green juice. And I always encourage folks just to start out simple, just start out your day with some healthy in the morning, like a juice or a smoothie, just to get your body fuel and fueling your body with nutrients. It will... Uh, because here's the thing, a lot of times we think we're hungry, but our body is really hungry for nutrients. And so that's why so many people overeat because they're eating food that isn't nutrient dense. And so you're eating a whole lot of calories, but you're still not full. And it's just because you're not, your body isn't getting the nutrients that, that it needs. Absolutely. Yeah. Baby steps just integrated mm -hmm. into your daily life. Uh, at least one. Now that actually brings up a whole nother, you know, set of questions too. When, when, when you go out to eat, like how, how does that go? Like you're, you're obviously big into smoothies and it's always so tough when, when you see like, like you have no idea what they're doing in a restaurant, right? Like in a restaurant, like right. they could be cooking with tons of sodium. You just don't know. Right. So how do you right. kind of navigate the, you know, I need a day off. I can't do all the work today. Let me, let me go out. Like what would be the, what would be the recommendation for people looking for that? I typically, I eat when I travel, I go and purchase the stuff and make my own stuff. So I don't eat out very often because again, like you said, you just don't know what they're, what, what they're putting, putting in, you know, 
it may taste good, but there may be a lot of things that aren't good for your body. Have there been any uh, surprising moments in your work as a, uh, a health lifestyle influencer? Are there any uh, like surprising people you've met or certain insights that sort of shaped your totally reshaped your perspective uh, moving forward or any moments or pivotal moments like that in your uh, health and wellness journey? Yeah, well, you, you know, one of the things that, that I've found is that change is so hard for many people. It's like even if, if, we, if we know that what we're eating or drinking is harming us, it's still so hard for people to to change and they you know i i've just been so surprised that so many people will say things like well you're gonna die of something you know so i'm gonna continue to eat and drink all of these things and i and 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 for 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 me um um i didn't know what i know now because i um, I didn't know now what uh, when I got diagnosed with cancer and even before I just didn't even really get the correlation between nutrition and your overall well-being. If I knew now, no knew then what I know now, I would have shifted before. But unfortunately, you know, a lot of times people don't shift until they get a diagnosis like cancer. You know, it, it can be it can be it can be very very challenging. But one of the things that I think I have um, seen is that, you know, I'm 56 now, and like most of my friends who are my age, around my age, they're on all kind of medications for high blood pressure, diabetes, and I don't take any of those things. I don't have, I don't have any of those ailments, and I think that that has helped to encourage and inspire some of them to make some changes because I don't have any of them. I don't have arthritis. I don't have, you know, weight issues. I don't have those issues. And it's just purely based upon what I put in my mouth because I believe everything that we put in our mouth is either fighting disease or feeding it. And I only want to put food in my body that is helping to fight disease and 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 nutritional food doesn't have to be bland doesn't have to be bland or tasteless you know there are things you can do to spice up your your, your food i'm wondering though has there been anyone any groups any support systems in your personal journey that have helped you to maintain this lifestyle and maybe even share in it so that it is so that you can kind of you know, get your juice on uh, with some people or someone that you know, or on that sort of, you know what I mean? Like it's, let's go for a juice, you know, like things right, like that. Right. Is there anything, any, any people in your, in your peer group or your life that have helped uh, in that change of, of lifestyle? Early on, there wasn't. Um, but as I have, um, on my journey though, I've met people who, you know, eat the same way that I eat. Um, and I've created a, a community on, on social media, you know, of folks who, you know, are trying to be healthy and live healthier. And so that has really kind of been the inspiration for me to share more because it creates community because I know how lonely that journey can be when you are trying to heal your body. Um, it can feel, you can feel very alone because People think that, oh, just eating that steak is not going to hurt you and just eating that piece of cake. But when you are trying to heal your body from a disease, it's so important that you're very intentional, like I say, about everything you put in your body. What is one message that you hope, uh, if one message could really shine through to your audience on social media, what would that one message be? That healing is possible. That healing is possible. I think oftentimes when people get a diagnosis um, and doctors only know what they know, they're not the be, be and all in. They only know what they know. Um, and they, they may give you a bleak prognosis, diagnosis, but healing is possible. And there are things that we can do to help with the healing process. And I always say, you know, if you're not dead, you're not done. If you, if you still have breath in your body, there's still a possibility for hope. 
I absolutely love that. That's fantastic. I may borrow that. That's uh, oh. <laughs> that's quite a good one. I love that launch. That's fantastic. Is, is there any uh, past project that you've really enjoyed working on uh, in health and wellness and why? I think, you know, writing my juicing book, you know, I, I've written three other books, but they weren't, um, they were like business or self-help books. Uh, but writing that book on, on juicing and, and sharing my journey in that book. And then also, um, I wrote a book called I Am Enough um, because I think a lot of times when people are facing a health crisis and, is, and are wanting to make a, cha a change, they often don't think that they can do it. And so um, writing that book, I Am Enough, just was a way to me to encourage myself as well as to hopefully encourage other folks to know that they are enough to, to make the changes that they need, need to make. Uh, they are enough to, to live the kind of life that they want to live. That's an incredible message. Very important for people to know that about themselves too. Yeah, we, for, we forget that. We forget that sometimes when we're in a crisis or we get a, a, a diagnosis, you know, we forget that, you know, we're enough. I always think that when you look back over your life, there's never a time where you didn't make it. You've gone through some, some low times and some challenging times, but there's never been a time where you didn't make it because you're still here. That's true. You survived everything you've made uh, that you've done up to this point. And if you right. really go back and think about it, but it's a true point too. People do forget. And that's why I loved your uh, circling back to your comment earlier about the, the affirmations on something as simple as a sticky note, just on mm -hmm. your mirror, like when you wake up, because when you wake, you, you do forget, people forget, forget. And it's important to remind yourself. Because you wake up and our mind starts to, our, when we wake up, our minds start to go on, what do I have to do? What's going on? We go to the problem. We go to the, you know, the worry, you know, and if you can start your day off just with a reminder to yourself that in spite of everything that's going on, in spite of all the challenges, all of the negative feedback that we might be getting, that everything is going to be okay, and it will be okay. Looking ahead, I know you shared that you'll be starting uh, a weekly show and podcast called Good Living Now. Uh, yeah. Do you want to share a little bit about what the show will look like? And is there anything that you're especially excited about uh, for this launch? Yeah, so I'm so excited about this show because it's going to be a weekly show on YouTube that will feature individuals who have overcome a health challenge and crisis and have overcome it through lifestyle changes, making, you know, lifestyle changes. And I think it's so important to share those stories because again, we don't hear enough of them. We hear about, you know, the bleak stories about people not surviving and not making it, but we don't hear enough about those who have made it. So I'm really excited to spotlight, you know, the, the stories of all of these survivors so that it will hopefully give people hope to let them know, one, you're not alone, and two, that you can get through whatever you're going through. I think you're big time onto something there, and I wish you all the luck and success in the world on that. I think the world really needs to hear more about those sort of stories beyond you know, the issue, what happened after, and what right. did you learn in the middle there? We, lo we love that very much, so wishing you all the luck and success that there is. I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and sharing all of this with our audience. I think there's a lot to unpack here, and uh, I think that if there's even just a few little uh, nuggets of wisdom that people can take away from this that'll make big change in their life. So I want to thank you for sharing uh, all of this with us and uh, being so uh, helpful and vulnerable with your story. And so thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, Tommy.